In our quest to understand the building blocks of wealth, we're veering off the beaten path. Today's focus isn't directly on wealth creation, but on the intriguing choices that follow. It's about the strategic decisions, safeguarding, and multiplying the wealth you've already amassed. So, gear up for an enlightening journey that promises to redefine your understanding of financial growth. But before we dive deep, let's cover some fundamentals for our newcomers. Understanding the distinction between assets and liabilities is crucial. Simply put, assets put money in your pocket while liabilities take money out. The more assets you have working for you, the richer you become. Pretty simple, right? With that groundwork laid, let's explore 10 assets making people rich. Welcome to Blue Chip Mindset, the winning mindset for success. If you enjoy the video or learn something new, please tap that like button and subscribe to the channel. Number 1. Tools of the Trade For a photographer, a high-quality camera is an asset. For a writer, it's their trusty laptop. And for a food delivery person, it's their bike or car. The distinction between an asset and a liability hinges on its direct connection to your earnings. For instance, if owning a car isn't directly tied to your job, then it's considered a liability. It's easy to mistakenly categorize something as an asset when in reality it's draining your finances, often due to a moment of indulgence. Your PlayStation or Xbox, for example, is a liability if its use is for entertainment. However, if you use it to create gaming content, it transforms into an asset. Number 2. Books, Songs, and Digital Courses Selling information or music is remarkably effective due to its infinite scalability. Once created, you can sell it countless times. This principle applies equally to digital courses, songs, or any digital product, making them incredibly valuable assets. Creating and distributing such an asset not only increases the value of the business, but can make you filthy rich. The moment your product is done, your job is to promote it and get it in the hands of as many people as you can. With music, it's even more interesting. Why? Because you only have to get it right once, and you can literally be set for life. For example, Michael Jackson's Thriller, released in 1982, is the best-selling album ever, with over 66 million copies sold worldwide. Its sales, including digital downloads and streams, continue to earn millions annually for its estate over 40 years after its release. Number 3. Time Money Time Arbitrage at its core, the time-money-time -time arbitrage principle represents a frequently undervalued concept in business education, yet it holds immense value. While you may not have the funds to invest in all assets, you possess a crucial one, time, which can be exchanged for money. This method involves leveraging your time to create income, and then using that income to hire others, effectively multiplying your time and accelerating growth. In essence, your goal is to convert time into money. At first, you might start working independently, but as your financial situation improves, you can scale by hiring others. The key is to compensate your team fairly while ensuring their output generates value beyond their costs, allowing you to retain the surplus as profit. This approach is a cornerstone of business growth and is used by almost every successful business on earth. So, dive in, work hard, and apply this arbitrage to establish a solid business foundation. Number 4. Cash If you have a stash of cash sitting in your bank account, it's barely earning any interest. In fact, it's not even keeping pace with inflation. Pretty disappointing, right? Yet, having cash on hand remains crucial. Take Microsoft, for instance, with its staggering $143 billion in cash reserves. That's liquidity at its finest. So, why do the wealthy insist on maintaining a hefty cash reserve? For starters, it's about seizing opportunities. Imagine stumbling upon the investment opportunity of a lifetime, but lacking the immediate funds to seize it. Without a cash reserve, you could easily miss out. Additionally, having cash reserves allows for leveraging immediate payment benefits. In scenarios where liquidity is an advantage, such as real estate transactions or acquiring assets from distressed sales, the ability to offer cash up front can secure significantly more favorable terms or discounts than what would be possible through finance deals. Number 5. Bonds 
Let's break it down kindergarten style. Imagine a big company or the government needs a piggy bank boost. They whip out bonds for sale to anyone looking to invest. By snagging a bond, you're basically lending them your lunch money, and they promise to pay you back with a little extra on top every month. These IOUs can last from a quick month to a long haul of 30 years. Now, here's the kicker. Bonds are the turtle in the investment race. Why? Because they're usually backed by the government, making them as safe as houses. But, and it's a big but, safety comes with a snooze factor. Returns are on the low side. Think about 3% a year. That's more than your bank's offerings, but might not get your heart racing. When the bond finally matures, you get your original investment back. If you're itching to dive into the bond world, you can go straight to the treasury department or a brokerage firm to get your hands on them. Number 6. Stocks The world of stocks is far less complex than the day traders on Wall Street might have you believe. Essentially, stocks offer a simple path to owning a piece of a company that trades on the public markets. Let's say a company has 100 million shares out in the wild, and you get your hands on 5 million of them. Just like that, you've got a 5% stake in the company. This financial innovation has opened doors for regular folks to invest in some of the most successful companies, such as Apple, Amazon, Tesla, and NVIDIA. If you're looking to get your feet wet in the stock market, various platforms and apps are available for buying and trading stocks right from your smartphone. Some of the current favorites among investors include Fidelity, E-Trade, Robinhood, and Webull, which is my favorite. In fact, I have the link for Webull in the video description or top comment pinned, and you could grab up to 12 free stocks right now just for signing up. So take full advantage of that if you can. Number 7. Mutual and Index Funds Here's a simple analogy. If selecting individual stocks is akin to picking single chocolates from a box, then opting for mutual and index funds is like taking the whole box. You get a taste of everything. This approach is a win-win. It diversifies your portfolio, spreads out the risk, and generally makes your investment journey a bit safer. Plus, index funds often lead the pack regarding steady earnings. Now, let's spotlight the Fab Five of index funds, in no particular order. Fidelity Zero Large Cap Index Vanguard S&P 500 ETF SPDR S&P 500 ETF iShares Core S&P 500 ETF and Schwab S&P 500 Index Fund These powerhouses are excellent starting points if you want to step into the index fund market arena. So, are index funds safer than stocks? Putting all your money into a single stock is like betting your entire fortune on one number at a roulette table in a casino. An extremely risky move. The chances of consistently outsmarting the market are also very low, especially without insider knowledge. This approach not only exposes you to high risk, but also ignores the benefits of diversification, a strategy proven to reduce losses and increase the potential for steady gains over time. This is where the beauty of index funds come into play. Picture the S&P 500 as the stock market's Avengers, assembling the top 500 companies. It's a dynamic team where underperformers are replaced by up-and-comers. With an impressive track record and an average annualized total return of 9.8% over the past 90 years, the S&P 500 has solidified its reputation. Dreaming of long-term wealth? Index funds are your best ally. They're not just a safe choice, but a smart strategy for savvy investors aiming for a diversified and resilient portfolio. Before we move on to the seventh item on our list, please take a second to tap that like button as it helps get this info out to more people like you. And subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you aboard. Number 8. Real Estate As Mark Twain once said, buy land. They're not making it anymore. Highlighting the timeless value of investing in real estate. The wealthy love real estate, which is why 90% of them own it. First off, rental income is like the gift that keeps on giving, especially if you dive into the world of short-term rentals like Airbnb. For instance, by optimizing your listing for seasonal demand or local events, you can command higher rates, significantly boosting profitability. Then there's the sweet promise of appreciation. With populations swelling and everyone looking for their slice of space, property values are soaring. 
Whether it's cozy apartments, bustling office spaces, or vibrant commercial hubs, these assets are not just sitting pretty, they're working hard, earning their keep. In land, it's the silent winner, appreciating quietly in the background. Now, brace for the curveball. That house you currently live in? It's more of a money pit than a treasure chest. This opinion ignites many debates, but when you crunch the numbers, a house that doesn't put money in your pocket is more of a liability than an asset. It's a perspective that challenges the old-school notion of what truly counts as an investment. What's your take on this? Do you see a house as an asset or a liability, and why? Drop a comment below and share your thoughts. Number 9. Raw Materials and Commodities The raw materials and commodity markets is volatile, with prices swinging based on supply and demand. The astute observer buys when the market is down and sells when demand spikes. This strategy applies across the board, from currencies to oil, crypto, and even to rare wines, each offering unique opportunities for smart investors. In the last 15 years, for example, the price of gold has soared, illustrating the potential for substantial gains in traditional commodity markets. Similarly, rare wines have emerged as an intriguing alternative asset, offering impressive returns. Not widely known, rare wines have been consistently outperforming major stock indexes like the S&P 500 over the last two decades. This under-the-radar performance is why you see the affluent investing heavy sums in these fine vintages, not just for the prestige, but for the significant financial returns. The same can be said for vintage cars and luxury watches. But a cautionary note, before investing all your savings into a rare vintage wine or an exclusive timepiece you heard is rapidly appreciating, pause and reflect. One of the golden rules of investing is never putting your money into something you don't understand thoroughly. Disregarding this advice is a sure path away from wealth. Number 10. Royalties Royalties are payments made to the owners of intellectual properties, such as copyrights or patents, for the right to use their work. This system allows creators to earn money from their work long after the initial sale or publication. Royalties can come from various sources, offering continuous income for creators and innovators based on the popularity and utility of their work. To illustrate with real-world figures, J.K. Rowling, the celebrated author of the Harry Potter series, exemplifies the lucrative potential of royalties. As of 2024, her net worth is estimated at approximately $1.2 billion, a testament to the series' phenomenal success with over 600 million copies sold worldwide. The Harry Potter films have collectively grossed over $7.7 .7 billion globally, making them the fourth highest grossing film series. Coupled with revenue from merchandise, theme parks, and various other ventures, Rowling's earnings from royalties are not only monumental, but also establish her as the wealthiest author in the world. Similarly, George Lucas's strategic retention of merchandising rights for the Star Wars franchise has reaped enormous financial rewards. Before selling Lucasfilm to Disney in 2012 for over $4 billion, Lucas benefited significantly from the franchise's merchandise sales, which are estimated to have generated over $12 billion. The total value generated by the Star Wars franchise, including box office, merchandise, and licensing fees, is estimated to exceed $65 billion, showcasing the vast potential of royalties in the film and merchandise sectors. These J.K. Rowling and George Lucas examples underscore the immense value that intellectual property rights and royalties can generate, turning creative works into sources of ongoing and sometimes astonishing income. I hope you enjoyed the video or learned something new. If so, please like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications.